I suppose I could also title this video how you used to be able to run a middle school. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Swell Entertainment, and today I am talking about something that I was obsessed with in middle school, silly bands. Now, this video could also just be another installment of me talking about whatever I want, but mainly this started as another installment of something that was important to me when I was a kid or something that was like a big deal that I had questions about, like I did with my Miley's World video back in 2020. But also the more that I looked into these, the more that I realized that I could potentially do a whole new series about my What's Not a Cult But Feels Like a Cult series and make them defunct cults that used to be cults. And not that these are necessarily defunct, you can in fact still buy Silly Bands. I was able to buy these directly from the website, the Silly Bands website, but they're not nearly as prevalent as they were. Not nearly as prevalent. These things were everywhere, everywhere. I'm 24, I was in middle school in the 2010s mainly. Um, I started high school in 2012, graduated in 2016. But when these were huge, I was in middle school and I used to buy all of mine from Claire's. God, why did I buy so much shit from Claire's in middle school? That's why I wanted to talk about these, but I started looking at, I, these popped into my head for some reason. I don't remember why, probably cause some girl was like, a uh, POV, you're getting ready for school in 2012 on TikTok or something. And I saw that she had rubber bands on her arms and my brain went silly bands, you know, like probably something like that. But that made me look up silly bands and I found the website. And then the very first thing on their website is talking about how silly bands are going virtual and to learn more about their NFT project. I can't escape them, even when something was so iconically fungible. Yeah, you can't escape the NFTs. Hermes, I don't know what you're trying to eat, but you gotta stop. Anyway, it's telling me to get on the wait list for their NFTs. Uh, by joining the list, you are guaranteed access to the pre-sale pricing during launch. No. Is it just gonna be like the rubber bands in NFT form? You know what, we're not talking about the NFTs. That's not what we're doing. I looked up silly bands because I was fairly certain they just weren't selling these anymore, but they are. I was able to buy one, two, three, four, five packs of silly bands, and then I got a sixth for free. Got 13 year old man is like vibrating inside of me. <laughs> So I found several different articles talking about this craze. This one from Inc. is from 2011 article from the creator of Silly Bands, Robert Croak. And then I found one from Inner Exchange talking about American fads, Silly Bands. Silly Bands started selling in 2008 and then hit its stride in 2010. And within the year kind of started to dwindle by 2011. Though first sold online in 2008, these funky rubber bands hit the US market by storm in 2010 and became the biggest craze of the year. Children across the country were swept away by these colorful shape-shifting bracelets and retailers could not restock shelves fast enough for swarms of eager customers. Silly Bands are the product of BCP Imports LLC, a small company in Toledo, Ohio. However, the, the idea for forming these bracelets was inspired by a Japanese designer who invented shaped rubber bands as a way to stop people from throwing them away so quickly and to create a more sustainable product. I do wanna know how many of these have ended up in landfills. Because you know, they're not biodegradable at all. You know, they're choking hazards, still made by BCP Imports. When these bracelets hit stores in 2010, they were a veritable success and sparked BCP Imports to grow from a company with only 20 employees in 2008 to one with nearly 3,000 staff members in the US and China only two years later. In annual sales, the company grew from making 10,000 a year to over 100 million. I feel like everyone, myself included, had a story about how these ended up getting banned from their school. It's not like with the I Heart Boobies thing where some people used to say that even though they were for breast cancer that they were obscene and they were vulgar or whatever so that they could get them out. These though, these were a huge deal. We, I know kids who were selling them on campus. I know people who were just collecting them. Some of these are really deformed. How long have these been sitting in here? Have these been sitting in a warehouse since 2010? Every school that I know at some point had a reason of why these were banned. God, I think one school in my district said that they were encouraging gambling among students for the trading. Interesting tactic. My school in particular, I remember they got banned because of one student in particular. And I think he went to the office and said that they were just like throwing them or snapping them at him. And because of that, no one was allowed to wear silly bands to school anymore, which hey, all it takes is one. But that was the particular reason that I got. So I got, God, what, what designs did I get? I wanted a couple of them. So I got some cool ones. So I got 
the Halloween pack, which has a ghost, a Frankenstein, a spider, a witch, a jack-o'-lantern, and a bat. I got the Hollywood pack, which VIP, iHeart LA, palm tree, video camera, director's chair, and film clapperboard. The Barbie pack, because I thought it was fun. Barbie pack, Barbie posing, Barbie in heels, poodle, heart sunglasses, high heels, Barbie profile. The fantasy pack, a mermaid, unicorn, fairy, dragon, phoenix, genie. The Yo Gabba Gabba pack was the one that I got for free. So DJ Lance Rock, Muno, Fufa, Broby, Tootie, and Plex. Tootie, that's the name of the character, okay. The dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Brontosaurus, Triceratops, Velociraptor, Footprint, and Titanosaurus. This is where I'm genuinely curious why you think these fell off. Cause I mean, even trends like this, if they're just one school semester, usually they last a little longer than one year. I don't know, I just feel like usually it takes longer than a year or let's say even two years for trends like this to fall apart. And so it's interesting to me that it seems like these did all collectively like leave our lives pretty quickly. Like considering how these were everywhere. Like I remember the Claire's at the district, okay, which is the one that I used to always go to. They had them everywhere, you know, like there was at least one whole section of paneling that was just silly band. At one point it was just by the register, but then they changed it around so there was at least one section of paneling that was just all silly bands. Like you weren't cool if you didn't walk in with your wrist looking like this, you know? So I'm wondering why? Will they tell me? I doubt it. Anyway, this is from the Ink article. This is from the creator of Silly Bands, like I mentioned, talking about how he went to a trade show in China in 2006 and saw shape rubber bands created by a Japanese designer. Months later, the idea came to me to make them bigger, thicker, and more detailed. So Silly Bands was born. It was an insane few years. At our peak in 2008, we were selling more than a million packs of Silly Bands a week. We had people driving to our offices from Alabama, Indiana, Kentucky, you name it, because they couldn't get through on the phone and they needed Silly Bands for their stores. One day we were so overwhelmed with shipments and phone calls, we ran an ad on Facebook saying if anyone was looking for work, we'd hire them on the spot. We had a line down the sidewalk. Our warehouse was full. So we set up tables outside the building and had people packing orders right there. Every day presented a new challenge, but every challenge was a great one. Out of necessity, I moved into a loft above my office and at one point, three of my managers were living there with me. And it's nothing you can complain about. When your company goes from obscurity to national news, it's a good problem to have. Silly bands put me in a category of wealth that most people have never imagined, but I've been cautious. You hear stories of people who hit the lottery and go broke a year later. I wanna take this wealth and create more success. Our US sales started to slow during the summer of 2010 and we expected it. The crazy United States is over and that doesn't offend me at all. That's why we're so vigorous about adding new products to go with the brand. Once you've had a big hit, it seems people are willing to give you more chances because they think maybe, just maybe, your luck will strike. Brainchild Products in 2003 is the company he founded. Let's see. There's another article from the Fair Viewer talking about silly bands from, again, 2011. So a lot of these, yeah, see, this seems like a quick craze to me for something like this. Like, is it that quick always? Or am I just used to, because of social media, things having more longevity? Could it be that? That sounds weird to compare something from pre-social media to having longevity now, but I mean, there's different ways for companies and products to stay in the cultural, Malu is not the right word, but like in the space, you know, like there's ways for them to be more active now than before. Here's the Frankenstein. Let's see, is there a way for me to show you? Oh, probably on my phone maybe. Let's see, here's my Frankenstein. Some of these are really warped. And so I wish there was a year on these when they were made. That'd be so cool. Ooh, apparently Robert Croak is dating a social media influencer. My Yeti mic decided to sabotage me. And so halfway through this video, while I was recording, it stopped recording sound. It's not like it distorted the sound. It just stopped absorbing sound to record. We did not catch it until the following day. So we have the audio that's from the camera that was recording as well, but despite all the editing that we've tried to do to make it a little more bearable, it will sound like I'm in the bottom of a well for the rest of this video. So here's an article from Study Break about Silly Bands from 2020. 10 years later, it's time to celebrate Silly Bands and its short-lived spotlight. The children's toy fad was intense but brief, yet its legacy lives on in Subtle Ways Within Us by Alicia Ferlin from the University of Pittsburgh. Is this just a one-off? Am I just losing my, like, I, I don't know. Cause I remember these being like a huge part of my middle school experience. And maybe it's just cause it was so many years ago now that I'm thinking that it was a bigger deal than it was, or at least longer lasting than it was. Maybe this was a one semester one-off. 
See, now I'm wondering, we rebrand silly bands. You don't have to do the NFT shit. Let's not do that. But like, I feel like there's a way to rebrand these and then bring them back. Like, I feel like there's a way to partner with brands or bands or musical artists, you know, more that to bring this more into the cultural spotlight. Hell, you could be a sponsor when we were young fest. They need sponsors. So that might be good. At one point in this article, they said the growth was spurred by children's ravenous appetites for the product, enabled by parents who were pleased with its affordability. I believe even now, I think I paid a total for all these silly bands of maybe $12, maybe. But parents' relationships with the bands soon soured as they worried that their children's well-being could be at stake. Distraught children railed against the system as they watched many of their schools ban their precious silly bands, condemning them as distractions. The lucrative marketplace where the commodities were traded, which had once found at home in the schoolyard, now had to be taken underground. Sounds so serious. But like, even then, like when they were banned in my school, I know they didn't disappear from my school. (laughs) Sounds like I'm talking about prohibition. Even when silly bands were no longer being active, like I know kids who wore them around their ankles so their jeans would cover it, you know, so their pant legs would cover it or under their tube socks, you know, like there are people who still wore them. Then suddenly, six months later, the demand stalled. Stores were forced to offer two for one deals to get rid of silly bands, which only recently were flying off the shelves. A craze whose relentless momentum couldn't even be slowed by school wide ban came to a screeching halt seemingly out of nowhere. Our indifference to silly bands came as swift as our infatuation, and to this day, none of us are quite sure why. See, but I mean, I think it would have to, like, it's supply and demand, you know, it, at a certain point, you're meeting the demand, okay? You're oversupplying stores because they, they're selling out. At a certain point, the more things get banned, I guess we could argue that this could potentially be caused by how much time students actually spent at school when I was a kid, even now, God. So you could argue that parents were like, oh, well, you can't wear them to school. Why would I get them for you now? when you can't wear them to school or you're getting them confiscated or you're trading them with your friends. Why would I buy you more when if you're just going to trade them? Like it could just be like the logical evolution of things getting banned. You know, at a certain point that does work. People get bored of them. The supply is going to outpace the demand at a certain point. The story of silly bands is by no means unique. If it's not silly bands, it's Beanie Babies, Webkins or Pokemon Go. I do have a Webkins video planned out because Webkins God, when I was 10, I got so many, fun, like every single birthday gift I got for my 10th birthday included a Webkins or was a Webkins. Silly Bands was but one example of a fad in children's toys. A fad is a form of behavior such as buying and wearing Silly Bands that enchants the public for a period of time. However, fads are relatively short-lived, usually wearing off after their novelty dies away. I don't think that that is necessarily even a thing now because of social media. Like I think Squishmallows have a cult following now fad or not, you know, I think there's various products that even if they did have a fad status at one point have reached more because of social media. Is that just what we're seeing now is that things are easier to remain in the public eye, keep the attention, keep the cult status because of social media. Did I just sump this whole potential series in one video? Yeah, I did. God damn it. Anyways, um, I think you could do a relaunch, Silly Bands, and this could be the new obsession. I think you got to change the colors. Not necessarily all of them. Some of these look nice. Like, I'm really excited. Let's open up the fantasy pack. Because some of these look really good, the color systems. I think if you make these biodegradable, I think there's... Okay, here's how you do it. Make them biodegradable, and you re-pitch these to, like, recycle old ones, okay? Make it so that they are can break down better. Cause I know rubber is difficult. There's no way these aren't just like strewn across landfills across the country, like sprinkles. Okay. These things are probably everywhere. I held on to my silly bands for a very long time. But the problem with when your parents divorce and you have to move 16 times over the span of your lifetime is you lose things like my sense of security and my ability to feel comfortable anywhere or roots or anything. But you also lose silly bands, band t-shirts, things like that. So I don't, I no longer have the silly bands. God, I feel like I dropped another one. I don't have Hermes to choke on it. I'm sure these are also choking hazards. Like I'm sure kids put these in their mouths. What is this one? Oh, it's like Nessie. Oh, is it the, no, it's the unicorn. Or it's the mermaid. There it is. These are insane. They're trying to say that this is an example of a fad versus a trend where a trend usually lasts longer all of that, which I mean, I guess we could say that there are certain products now that are trends or at least trends in purchasing trends and buying sustainable practices that are now so commercialized that they're no longer sustainable. 
That's a trend right now. Oh, the it girl style of fashion that looks always the same, but just different shades of beige and blue. You know, that's a trend right now. Okay, so then I, I don't know if I agree with this version. So this article to describe the difference between fads and trends talks about how a fad is a thing, like say silly bands, but trends will change future human behavior. So in this example, if a popular handbag becomes popular, then eventually the fad will die down. But if the handbag becomes used as a means of carrying things that they previously couldn't ha- carry before, then the brand becomes a trend or the product becomes a trend because you're changing future behavior. I do think that these had the potential for that, you know? Like, I think there was a way to make these last. And maybe in the moment, it's kind of like, okay, I think there's a certain element of things where people just get used to the hype of something. And even then, I don't think they got used to the hype because again, it was like a year or two that maybe that these were really popular. So they adapted quickly, but then maybe didn't adapt quick enough because it's like, yeah, you think this is all we can do because this is what's selling. Let's just focus on more designs and more colors versus how can we translate this into other products to potentially keep our brand at least, if not the product in the cultural space. I'm trying to think if there's a way to do this other than NFTs. Literally, I, how, what, what do we have to do to get you to not do NFTs? Literally anything, anything but NFTs. Let's figure it out. This article goes on to talk about the potential impact of silly bands, including that like people like my generation now have the shared experience of silly bands. Apparently they asked Beth Roberts, who is the director of Social Enrichment Center in Newton Square in Pennsylvania. They talked about how trading with peers is a terrific opportunity for a child to practice social skills like negotiation. I'm kind of obsessed with that, you just so now I want to hear your opinion on Girl Scout cookies and selling Girl Scout cookies. See, I feel like there's a way to relaunch these. And I shouldn't say relaunch because they're not gone. They still, you can go on the website right now and buy silly bands. Right now, you can go and do that. But they're not going to reach, and even regardless of what I pitch, regardless of what recommendations I make, I don't think they will ever reach that level of control (laughs) of presence that they did when I was in middle school. Not that the kids these days wouldn't be interested in colorful bands. It'd be very hard to draw kids away from the iPads that they've become accustomed to. Keep in mind, my generation grew up alongside social media and the development of it. We didn't grow up having it like, let's say my brother, who's even just three years younger than me. He has it and we are two very different people We are two very different people in just how we interact with social media. And so I think that that played a role here. Like these came about in the perfect time compared to social media, you know, and the reliance on technology that we currently have. So, which is why I'm against you doing NFTs, but I think there's a way you did it once before you can do it again. You know, like there's a way we can revamp these rebrand. I think the first step needs to be making them potentially better for the environment. Okay. Going full Lego, getting to a point where you decide that these are all going to be biodegradable, recyclable, not that their bricks are biodegradable, but they're made out of recycled plastics, but like something recycled. Cause this is a lot like, I know someone's going to be like, that's not a lot of rubber, but like when it's all stacked up like that, it's kind of a lot. And I'm obviously not just going to sit here and go throw these away. I'm going to display these. I'm going to find a way to display them properly. Maybe on the candle back there. That might be fun. I'm open up the Yo Gabba Gabba ones because I like free stuff. Could something like Silly Bands happen today? No, I don't think so. I think that these happened in the moment that they did at the perfect time. Like I mentioned, social media coming about when it did. I think that that, and then someone's gonna be like, well, in middle school, like social media was around. I agree. But these, I don't know. I think it's different now. I think that unless you started doing like muted colors, you know, like all of, oh goodness. I think there's a way, maybe more glitter styles because you got a couple of glitter ones in here, but not nearly enough in my opinion. Yeah, see like some of these have been in there for a while. These are all stuck together and you could argue that it's the packaging or what, but these have been chilling together for a bit, whether they've been in storage for years or not. There's no dates on these things. It'd be cool if they dated the actual thing. So you've got branding built into this in that it says silly on the band. That is cool. There's a way to do some retro 90s relaunch. I really, 90s, God. I really do think there's a way to bring these back. A lot of stuff from the 2010s are coming back around. And I think that this could be one of them if you play your cards right and revamp them in the proper way. They're not gonna reach the cultural significance that they once had, and maybe they won't have a young audience again, but my generation, I don't know. If you make these things cool again in the right ways, maybe send them out to some influencers. 
bring them back, partner with a couple of other brands. This could, we could make this work. We could bring back, we could re bring back the control of silly fans. Why am I talking like, it's funny because I'm like, what's in a cult that feels like a cult? And then I'm here talking about like, here's how we take over the world. The article goes on to talk more about the new normal. Cause again, this was in 2020 when the world was on fire and we were still expecting that it was going to be like a couple of months of it only being on fire. And now we're like about to go into a world war, which is fun. I know in the grand scheme of things, this is stupid. Me sitting here talking about silly bands is stupid, but I do think that, I don't know, I think we're allowed stupid. I think we're allowed that, you know? I think every once in a while we are allowed stupid and that's how people stay sane. You can you can be informed and also hold up poodle-shaped rubber bands. I know I'm talking in circles, but I'm really thinking, I'm like, I think we can do this. I think we can bring silly bands back. I think there's a way to bring back silly bands, not to the same level, probably not to a point where you're making a hundred million a year or selling 10,000 units a day. I don't think there is a point where you'll get to that point, but I do think there's a way we can bring these back into, mm, see, I think if we start partnering with stylists, fashion, fashion weeks happened already, but like, I think there's a way to at least bring these back into style at the very least for the older generation. The younger generation will just think it's cool at a certain point. See, there's a way to get moms in on this. I too, I still think that moms of young children it's always the best target market, okay? And I think that there's a way to do this. I don't know right off the top of my head. And there's a way to girl bossify this. <laughs> there's a way to girl bossify silly bands, okay? I think there is, and we shall do it. I, I'm just like, <laughs> see, I'm distracted. These are fun though. Should I just put them all on my wrist right now? Is there a way to make these shaped, but hair bands? Obviously the rubber bands, that's one thing. They're kind of annoying. They don't fully work as rubber bands, but like, I hate that I'm doing this right now, but I feel like there's a way. You could make these like a regular hair tie, but in fun shapes, that in itself could be like, oh, that could be a style thing because the people who know what they are will recognize them versus this that's definitely gonna rip out a chunk of my hair when I take it out. Because these are misshaped. You can tell that they're not normal rubber bands. And so I feel like there's a way to do this in a way that doesn't rip out people's hair when you try to pull it out. Cause ow, motherfucker, that was a bad way for me to do that. I think we just gotta keep workshopping it. Maybe I'm not the one to do it, probably not me. Hair ties, mom stuff. God, what's rubber bands? People don't, mm. okay, you're gonna hate this. Partnering with Squishmallows. Some Squishmallows have little ears and stuff. Squishmallow silly bands. Oh, literally if you partner with Squishmallows and make Squishmallow shaped silly bands, people would lose their minds. I know it's hard to do because they're all egg shaped, but I think there's a way to do it. <laughs> it's just a bunch of different colored egg shapes. I don't know, this video was mostly pointless. I just wanted to uh, relive my middle school glory days uh, when I was deeply unhappy. I think that we can all learn something from silly bands in the past. Um, when things burn bright, doesn't mean it's gonna last. You can take that to your relationship status. You know, it may feel great now, but it could only last six months. So, you know, don't hire too many people and don't, what is, oh, it's a pop. I thought this was a ghost. It's the dinosaur paw or track. Don't oversell yourself. Don't over pitch yourself. Don't overextend yourself because you know, the hype could wear off. Your relationship could crash and burn. Don't get engaged after three months because you may love them now, but I mean, is it gonna last? What if you get banned? <laughs> I think that's where I'm gonna end this. Is this video mostly kind of pointless? Yes, but I had fun making it. And I do think that there's a way to bring these back. These are way too tight on my hands. <laughs> I think one, you need to make them for adults. That'll help because these are real small. If you make them bigger, that'd be good. They're very tight. Some of these are bigger than others, but still. Do you remember silly bands? Did you ever have silly bands? What was the reason that they got banned from your school? Because at some point they all get banned. What's a way that you think we could bring back silly bands? Let me know, comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, this Welsh Nanians podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. All of that will be linked down below. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also support me on Patreon, that'll be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, That'll do all up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Watch the moment I stop recording be when I realize exactly how we should bring back Sully Vance. Like watch me just stumble upon thought. Thank you, Audrey, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, China, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Beckles, Hopeless, Hollow, Incognito, Jack Array, Joe, John, M. Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kevin, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew S, Meme, Lord, Red, Michael, Michael, Jane, Micah the Great, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Robert, Red, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tosh, Timmy, Tom, Wendy, William, Winter, Zendry, Zwing,